Luke chapter 19, verse 11. If you're there, say Amen. Let us read. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, Therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants, and delivered them ten pounds, and said unto them, Occupy till I come. That means you work for it until I come. But his citizen, but his citizen hated him, and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded his servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little. Can you imagine? It was six thousand four hundred dollars. Uh, if this scholar who, who who commented on this is right, that pound is six thousand four hundred dollars. So naging ten yon, so naging sixty-four thousand dollars. And you know what the Lord said? Thou hast been faithful in a very little. If you are faithful in $64,000, the Bible tells us it is very little. And if you're not unfaithful with your 10 peso, how unfaithful we are. Hello? Verse 17. And he said unto him, Well thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man, a harsh man. That's what he meant. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked man, taking up that I lay not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then givest not thou in my, my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that had ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he had ten pounds. For I said to you that unto every one which had shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he had, shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which, not, which would not, that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. We will not interpret the story as what it is really used for. It is, for, it is about the coming kingdom of God. But uh, we will use that story as an illustration of what we call steward leadership. Na tayo po mga tinawag ng Panginoon na maglikod sa Kanya, tayo po ay mga katiwala niya. Are you with me? Hello? Na, na wala po sa atin mamayari ng mga bagay na meron po tayo. If you're a Christian, listen to this, you ought to know that you are a steward. Hello? The Bible tells us we are His stewards. Tayo ay pinagkatiwalaan ng Panginoon ng mga bagay-bagay para lalong magamit sa Kanyang gawain. We are the people whom God entrusted the things that we have for us to be used for His glory until He comes again. Hanggang sa Kanyang pagbabalik. Are you with me, Christians? Hello? So, mga kapatid, kagaya mo ng lesson natin kanina, itutuloy ko lamang, but I will give you a challenge on this. I will put a challenge on my message this morning. If you're a leader, you must be a faithful steward. You must be a faithful steward. Kanina, kailangan maging servant-hearted leader ka. Pero ngayon naman, kailangan natin makita sa Bible na pinapakita rin po ng Panginoon na dapat tayo po ay mga katiwala, hindi katiwaldas. Are you with me? I am a steward of God. I am a child of God, but I am a steward of God. Open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Especially those who are teaching the Bible. We are God's steward as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2.
Verse number one and verse number two. Ready? Are you there? Say amen. amen. Let us read. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If you are a servant in Christ, if you claim to be somebody who served the Lord, then you need to realize you are a steward of God. Ikaw ay pinagkatiwala ng Panginoon, ng oras mo, ng buhay mo, ng pamilya mo, ng pera mo, ng pangarap mo. Everything you have is God-given. And you are a steward of God. God is the owner of everything. Are you with me? So as a steward, tayo po mga kapatid ay ginawang katiwala ng Panginoon. So listen to this. As I am always telling you, I have a short life. And I will answer all the things that I do in this short life to the God who gives me this life. Yeah. Ikaw ay sasagot sa Panginoon. If God doesn't exist, then do your own thing. But God is real. He exists. He created you. He saved your soul. And then you, He made you His steward. Huh? Binigyan ka niya ng panahon na yung buhay mo na yan para ho sa mga bisita ho namin. Meron ho kami gustong ipaliwanag sa bawat isa sa atin. Ang tao po kahit may religion, makasalanan. Kahit po tayo yung mabait, makasalanan. At sabi mo ng Bible, tayong mga makasalanan ay karapat dapat marusahan sa impyerno. Pag ako na matay na makasalanan, ang sabi ng Bible, eh, sino ba sa atin na hindi mamamatay? Tama ba? Lahat po tayo mamamatay. We will all die. And once we die, the Bible tells us we will face God's judgment. At ang sabi ng Bible, sapagkat ang lahat ay nagkasala nga at hindi nakaabot sa kanawalhatian ng Diyos. At dahil sa kasalanan niya, ang tao ay papunta sa impyerno. Ang sabi yun ng Bible at ang lahat ng sinungaling ay may bahagi sa lawa ng nagliliyab na apoy at asubri. Ito ay ikalawang kamatayan. Ang sino mong tao hindi matagpuan ng pangalan sa aklat ng buhay ay tatapong sa lawa ng nagliliyab na apoy at asubri. Hindi po biro ang Bible. Hindi po biro ang katotohanan ng Bible. Ang tao ay may maiksing buhay. Ang tao ay mamamatay. Ang tao ay mapaparusahan. At ang tao ay napapahamak sa impyerno. Ngunit may mabuting balita po. Ngunit may mabuting balita po. Kung meron mo dito magsasabi, Pastor, hindi ko alam kung saan ako pupunta pag ako'y namatay. Hindi ko alam kung saan ako pupunta. Pero alam ko, makasalanan ako. Pero alam ko, hindi ako perfecto. Ang sabi ng Bible, ikaw ay pagtungo ng impyerno. Ngunit, ngunit, sabi ng Bible, ngunit, gayon na lamang ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa sanlibutan at ipinagkaloob niya ang kanyang buktong anak upang ang sino mong sumampalataya sa kanya, hindi mapapahamak magkakaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Ate at kuya, kung meron po dito na hindi tiyak kung saan siya pupunta pag namatay. Ang sabi ng Bible, may mabuting balita. May Diyos na nagmahal sa tao. Ang tao makasalanan, minahal ng Diyos. Iniwanan ng Diyos ang langit. Nagkataon ako, ipinako sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Namatay, nabayubay, inilibi, nabuhay muli pagkatapos ng tatlong araw upang maging tagapagligtas ng sandinakpan. Ang sino mang tao sumampalataya kay Jesus, hindi mapapahamak magkagalawan ng buhay na walang hanggan. Amen. Hello? sa mga bisita po namin, kung first time nyo lang pong nakarating ng church, gusto po namin ipaanam sa inyo na higit sa mensahe yung pinapangalan ko ngayon, ang pinakamahalagang mensahe ng kaligtasan. Amen. Na ang Diyos mahal ka. Na ang Diyos ay nagkatawang tao para sa iyo. Na ang Diyos ay naipako sa krus ng kalbaryo para sa iyo. Sapagkat ang kasalanan mo'y hindi mo mababayaran. Ang kasalanan mo'y hindi mababayaran ng relihiyon. Ang kasalanan mo'y hindi mababayaran ng pag-attend sa church. Ang kasalanan mo'y hindi mababayaran sa iyong mga mabuting gawa. Sapagkat ang mabuting gawa ay kapos sa mata ng Diyos, madumi sa mata ng Diyos, kulang sa mata ng Diyos. Kaya ang ginawa ng Diyos, siya ang nagkatawang tao at namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo upang maging bayad sa iyong mga kasalanan. Nais ng Diyos na ikaw ay tumalikod at tanggapin mo siya ngayon bilang tagapagligtas. Manampalataya ka sa Kanya. Ilagak mo ang buong mong pagtitiwala doon sa Diyos na nagkatawang tao para sa iyo at namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. At yan ay si Kristo Jesus na ating Panginoon at Tagapagligtas. Ang ibig sabihin, Pastor, mananampalataya lang ako sa Kanya. Ako'y magsisisi at tatanggapin si Kristo bilang Tagapagligtas. Ako'y maliligtas. Yan ang sabi ng Biblia. Hindi ako ang nagsabi niya. Yan ang pangako ng Diyos. Kaya ngayon, ang sasabihin ko nga muli, bago tayo magpatuloy, ikaw ay makasalanan, 
Ikaw ay mamamatay, ikaw ay mapaparusahan, pero ikaw ay minahal ng Diyos. At ang sabi ng Bible, hindi mo kailangan magdusa sa isang impyerno. May nagdusa na para sa iyo ng pako sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Kailangan mo siyang tanggapin ngayon. Kailangan mo manalig kay Kristo ngayon. At kung babagabagi ng Diyos ang iyong puso, nais ng Diyos na maligtas ka. Nais ng Diyos na tanggapin mo siya at gawin mo siyang tagapagligtas ng iyong kaluluwa. Amen? Hello? At ngayon po, na sino kong tumanggap na kay Kristo bilang tagapagaligtas dito sa lugar na ito? If you receive Christ as Savior, the Bible tells us you became His steward. Pinagkatiwala niya sa atin ang gospel. Are you with me? Hello, it is not the work of the angel spirits to go here, biglang magmumulto, tapos sasabihin sa kanila kung paano maligtas. It is my work to tell other people about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ikaw ay katiwala. Hello? Sino sa inyo ang naligtas dahil sa sarili niyang gawa? Sino, who, sino sa inyo, who among you got saved because of your own mighty works? Nobody. Are you with me? Amen. Sino sa inyo ang saved na? Are you saved? Amen. So then, if your salvation is by God, listen to this. You are His steward for that. <coughs> pinagkatiwalaan ka niya, hindi yan sa'yo, pinagkaloob niya nang huwag mong sarilinin, ibahagi mo sa ibang ebanghelyo ni Kristo. Are you with me? In your school, you are a steward of God of that salvation. In your family, you are a steward of God of that salvation. In your life, ikaw ang katiwala. Sino sa inyo may inasanas? Si nakaranas na ba kayo na may nagtrabaho para sa inyo? Nakaranas sa bakay ng leader kayo pagkatapos meron kang inatasan. O, oh, yan ang gagawin mo, ha? O, oh, etong pambili, ha? Ibili mo. Pagkatapos, hindi bumili. That is the sermon that we're talking about. His master left him something and his master then he told him, when I go back, it should be more. I will leave that to you and I will entrust that to you. You were occupied till I come. You work until I come. Before the Lord Jesus Christ comes or you come to Him. Walang middle. Meron mo kayo naisip na iba? Basta mo kami iba. It's either God will come or you will come to Him. Is there anything else? Hello? Is there anything? Ako, hindi ko ako mamamatay. No, we're dying soon and we will face the one who owns everything. The one who entrusted us. At tanong, nakapag-share ka na ba ng gospel sa mga kasamahan mo sa trabaho? Nakapag-share ka na ba ng gospel sa mga ka-classmate mo? Or even, do they really know that you are a Christian? Hello? Alam na ba nila na Christiano ka? <laughs> Alam na ba nila na ligtas ka? O kagaya ng lagi nating napapag-usapan, magkikita kayo apat na taon, limang taon na kalipas, at sasabihin niya, Uy, Christiano ka pala? Hindi halata. Pangit yung ganun, ano? You're a Christian and it is not noticeable. Oh, it's unnoticeable. How you, how you made it a secret? I didn't know it. Ano, ang sagwa pa, pero ano yung ligtas tayo, pero hindi nila nahalata. Mga kapatid, pinagkatiwadaan lang tayo. We did not work for our salvation. We did not even pay for our salvation. We are being entrusted of this salvation. And this repentance and remission of sins should be preached among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. This gospel was entrusted to us, God's people. What are we doing about it? What are we doing about it? Are you with me? So let us go to the message. As Christian stewards, the Bible tells us we are enabled. Are you with me? We are just enabled. Nothing to boast of anything. Because all that we have, including our salvation, is God-given. Pastor, ako ang nagpawis sa trabaho ko. Siguro yung kaligtasan ko, bigay ni Lord. Pero yung pag-aari ko, lahat ng tahanan ko, lahat ng akin, akin niya pinagpawis ang wet. Sino nagbigay ng pawis mo? Let us open our Bibles in the book of Deuteronomy. I forget the verse. But it says that, can you find, pakihanap nga po doon sa mga merong uh, concordance dyan. Kasi please, pwede natin idahilan. Sometimes we can make it as an excuse. Na, hindi, I have, I work for it. I sweat for it. I did it all. I gave it 
all this is mine. Pwedeng sa akin to, lakas kong ito. Hindi ho eh, kasi ang Diyos ho ang nagbigay sa atin ng lakas. Tama ho ba? It is the Lord our God who giveth us strength. It's in Deuteronomy. That when, eh, ayun, Deuteronomy chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Verse number 5. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. Ready, read. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, Assyrian ready to perish was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a the few, and became there a nation great and mighty and populous, and the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. Verse 7. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. Verse 8, And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with great terribleness and with signs and wonders. Verse number 9, And He had brought us into this place and had given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. There was a time when the Israelites were commanded by the Lord to give their first fruits. And then the Lord said, Every time you come and give something to the Lord, Always remember what the Lord has done in your life. We don't do this thing, but listen to this. We have the same God who saved us. We have the same God who protected us. We have the same God who loved us. We have the same God that had it not been for His grace, we're nothing. Are you with me? As servants, as stewards, we are just enabled. Are you with me? Just like the story that we have read, the, the master has given them pounds and they traded it. Tama ho ba? And as they traded it, as they used it to earn, to grow more, what, what would you think of any of those men na ang paglabas niya, ipagyayabang niya sa kanya yun? Are you with me? What would you think of any man dun sa tatlong yun? Kahit yung faithful na naging sampu pa yun sa kanya. Habang hawak-hawak niya na lumalago, may makakakita sa kanya at sasabihin ng ganing, lago na ng business mo. Pwede niya bang sabihin na, eh, alam mo naman, akin to, talagang pinaghirapan ko ito. Basically, he has nothing. Wala ho siyang pag-aari. Tama ho ba? Meron ho bang pag-aari yung tao na yun sa kanyang mga kamay? Mga kapatid, are you with me? Meron ho ba? Wala. So, ganun ho ang dapat na pag-iisip bawat ligtas sa atin. If you're a Christian, you've got to have that mind. I am just enabled. If you have a good voice, God has just given you a good voice. Use it for His glory. If you have a talent, then thank the Lord. Use it for His glory. If you can work, then work hard. Use it for His glory. Ladies and gentlemen, as servants of God, we are just enabled. Praise the Lord. God has enabled us. The first day we have a church and until now it is so different. Are you with me? But the same servants of the Lord that are worshipping, never can we be proud of ourselves. Amen. All that we have, the air that we breathe, the life that we have, the safety of our family, it is because of God's goodness. Amen. He has given us a short life. Binigyan niya tayo ng buhay. Kaya't napakapangit pag nabuhay ka na parang ikaw ang may-ari ng lahat. It is not really good to think that you have what you own. No, you do not own anything you have. The Bible tells us, I am a steward of God. I was just enabled by God. Amen? Amen. Nothing to boast in this life. How can a dust boast of anything? How can a dust boast of anything? Are you with me, Christians? You never, you should need, you don't need to boast of anything because you are just enabled. Number two, servants, servant stewards or steward leaders 
not are not just enabled, but they should be responsible. Hello? Buksan po natin ulit. Luke 19. Luke 19. Luke 19. Are you there in Luke 19? Verse number 13. Verse number 13. Verse number 13. Are you ready? Amen. Say amen. amen. Ready, read. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy. Can I come? Sabi ng kata natin kanina, toiling on, toiling on. Hindi toiling on. Toiling on. Hindi toiling on. Uh, toiling on. Magpatuloy sa pagtatrabaho. Ano ba yung talaga dito? <laughs> ito ang taong ito niligtas ng Panginoon ligtas ka na ba? pag namatay ka sa pumunta pang kanilo pag namatay ka sa'yo sigurado ha? ba't hindi yan nata? <laughs> si brother Vincent safe are you with me? niligtas ng Panginoon minahal ng Diyos ang taong ito meron bang ang Diyos na isa gawin siya sa buhay niya? do you think God created this man and saved this man just for nothing? ah bahala ka lang Vincent kung anong gusto mong gawin sa buhay mo no this man was saved for him to share the gospel to his loved ones. Amen. This man was saved for God's plan for his life. Because Vincent will not live longer than 200 years. I don't even know if he will reach 150. Or 100 or 80. I cannot even know if I will reach 37 or 38. We dream to live long. But listen, even if it is long, it is short. Uh, do you get it? Kahit mahaba ang tingin mong buhay mo, ang iksi. Ang iksi-iksi. Sobrang iksi. Ang anak ko, payod na. Sabi ko, parang kailan na, wala pa akong anak. Pero ito na limang taon na, mag-aaral na. Sabi ko, iba ang buhay, napaka-iksi lang. Vincent has many things to do in life, just like you and me. Pero sana, malilimutan ba ni Vincent na siya'y iniligtas ng Panginoon? Siya ay minahal ng Diyos at ginawa ng Diyos. So, in his daily life, ang dapat niyang maisip, merong pinagkatiwala ang Diyos sa kanya. Yes. If Vincent will try to live with the next 10 years of his life, ilan taong ka na after 10 years? <laughs> ilan taong ka na after 10 years? 30, 28 ka na ba ngayon? <laughs> ilan taong ka na? Ilan taong ka na ngayon? 19, no? Oh. Nag-29 na siya. Ang tayo mo. Plus 10. 29 years old na si Vincent. Pagkatapos ng 10 taon. Napakabilis lang noon. Pagkatapos ng 20 taon, 39 na siya. Eh, paano kung iabutan ng 39 to? Salamat kung makabutan. Eh, kung maka-40 na. Times to ako nga ng 32, 33. Pag na-double ito, senior citizen na ako. Ang bilis lang ng oras. Yung iba sa atin, hindi na matotople. Tama ho ba? Thank you, Lord Vincent. <laughs> so listen, ang iksinang buhay natin. Amen. And God has given us a lifetime to work for Him. Amen. I'm not asking you what are you doing in your work right now. I'm not asking you what you're doing in your school right now. I hope you're doing something to pass. But listen, what are you doing for God? Yeah. Ano yung ginagawa natin para sa Panginoon? Uh, Kasi magsusulit tayo sa Kanya. We ought to be responsible for what God has given us. Lord, iniligtas mo ako. Responsable ako sa kaligtasan ng iba. Responsable ako marinig lila ang ibang elmi ni Cristo. I am responsible. Hello, are you with me? As a servant, you need to be responsible. And next, second to the last, you need to be accountable. Accountable. <laughs> Open your Bible again to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2. Are you with me? 
Okay, read. Moreover, ready, read again. Thankful. Second Corinthians chapter five verse ten. Second Corinthians chapter five verse ten. Ang hinahanap ng Dios sa kanyang katiwala matapat. Second Corinthians chapter five verse ten. Ready, read. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. If you're a Christian, you will face the Bima judgment soon. Hindi ka nahaharap sa Lord para itapon sa impyerno. We will not face the Lord to, ju to be judged of our sins. Somebody took the part of that. Are you with me now? Praise the Lord one day when I come and face the Savior, I will not be judged for my sins. Hello! Somebody died for your sins. Somebody died for my sins. And you know who he is? He is the judge himself. Praise God! Ang namatay para sa kasalanan ko, yung mismo hukum. Binayaran niya na. So, hindi ka pa ba magpapasalamat na pagharap mo sa Kanya, hindi kulpihan ang harap mo sa Panginoon? Hindi papakita sa TV lahat ng kasalanan na ginawa mo, ang dami niyan. Are you with me? You will never be accountable of the sins that you have done in eternity. Because somebody paid the price of your sins. Pero haharap ka dun sa Kanya bilang isang nigtas, but as a child of God, you will face the judgment seat to answer for the work that was entrusted you. Yung trabaho na ibinigay sa iyo ng Panginoon, yun ang ihaharap mo sa Diyos. Are you with me, Christians? Listen. Sa worship, sa pag-worship mo, yan ang isasagot mo sa Panginoon. Hello? Sa pagsusul winning mo, yan ang isasagot mo sa Panginoon. Sa pagiging tatay mong kristyano, sa pagiging asawa mo, sa pagiging asawa mong babae, yan ang isasagot mo sa Diyos. Sa pagiging anak mong kristyano, yan ang isasagot mo sa Diyos. Sa paglilingkod mo sa kanyang church, yan ang isasagot mo sa Panginoon. Accountable ka ba? Hello? Do you feel that sense of accountability? Batay ka, ako mananagot sa Diyos dito. Ako yung ligtas, ako yung binagong buhay, ako yung pinagkatiwalaan. Pati ko sa paggastos natin, accountable tayo sa Diyos. Pati sa ating living, accountable tayo sa Diyos. Pati sa ating soul winning, accountable tayo sa Diyos. Pati sa prayer meeting, accountable tayo sa Diyos. Pati sa Sunday worship, accountable tayo sa Panginoon. Pati sa, pati sa buhay natin, accountable tayo sa Diyos. Kaya ang tanong, ako nga, lalo kami sabi ng Bible, be not ye many masters for that we will have the greater condemnation. Kami mga tagapagturo ng Bible, accountable kami doble. We are accountable to God. As your pastor, I am accountable for you. Kaya minsan nasasaktan kayo pag sinasabihan kayo, eh ako yung mananagot sa inyo. Hello? Pag napaalalaan kayo, kapatid, Okay lang yung minsan na lang ka kahit emergency. Pero yung buhay mo na yung pagiging lady, hindi tama yan. Hello? If you are a Christian, you will be sometimes rebuked by the preaching or the preacher. You will be, you will, you will be told to do something. You will, you will be reminded to do something. Huwag naman lagi na nasasaktan mo kayo pag nasasabihan. Sapagkat may mananagot sa inyo. Hello? At mananagot din kayo sa Diyos. Are you with me, Christians? As a child of God, as a steward leader, I am accountable. And last but not the least, sasagutu tayo sa pagkano sa tingin ng gawin. And so then, as God's steward leaders, we always ought to be humble. Tignan niyo, buksan ko natin yung Luke 16 or Luke 19. Verse number 21. Are you ready? Read. For I fear thee, because thou art an oster man. Takot ako sa'yo, malupit ka kasi. Verse number 21. Take us up that thou nailest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. 
He doesn't have a good relationship with his master. That is why he was not a humble steward. Proudly, he told that man, eh kasi malupit ka. Mga kapatid, kagaya na na pag-usapan natin kanina, you were just enabled. You, you, you must be responsible. You are accountable. And lastly, you ought to be humble. Kailangan mong makita na ang Diyos ang pinaglilingkuran mo. Bakit ka magyayabang sa Kanya? Anong problema? There is a problem with this relationship with His Master. Christians, is it this? Everything that you do in life without a good relationship with your God will be a failure. Kamusta ho yung relasyon natin sa Diyos? Kamusta ho yung devotion natin sa Panginoon? How do we see our relationship with God? Praise the Lord, we, are, we have peace with God. But do you have the peace of God? Ngayon, ligtas ka na. Hindi ka na pupunta ng impyerno. Pero tanong, bilang ligtas, masaya ka ba sa pagiging ligtas mo? Christians, are you with me? That is why maraming Kristiyano masaya sa kabuntuhan. Kasi hindi maayos ang relasyon nila sa Panginoon na nasa langit. How is your relationship with your God? How is your relationship with the enemy of God? Ano sa ating Bible? Ang mundo ay kaaway ng Diyos. Yung kamunduhan. For the love of this world is enmity before God. So how much is your relationship with the world? Pag close na close kayo sa world, may problema kayo ng Panginoon. Kaya pagbabalik siya, wala kang ipagsusulit kasi hindi kayo okay. Maintain a good relationship with your master. Seek ways to carry your task. And lastly, be faithful in that which is little. Think of something before we pray. Think of something that can be greater than your God that you have. Or just think of something that you think that it is big in the sight of God. Malaki yan sa Diyos. Malaki yan sa Diyos. Napakalaki yan sa Diyos. Are you with me? Ano yung meron ka? Is it your career? Is it your career? Is it too big for God? Hindi kaya ni Lord kaya to. Ako lang kaya ang nakakagawa nito. Alam naman mo natin, di ba? Everything that I have is God-given. Even if I am the president of this country, and I'm not, but even if I were the president of this country, that is still little in the sight of the Creator. How much more? Nakita nyo, presidente yung ba ako ng Pilipinas? Hindi. So, anong tingin ko sa sarili ko? Sa harap ng Diyos? Eh, kung yung presidente nga, mas maliit pa sa Diyos. Who am I to boast of anything? Itong iPad na to, bigay lang ng matatay ito eh. Pero bigay ng Diyos to. Meron ba akong ipagyayabang dito? Lord, may iPad ako. Lord, ah, pera ko to. Laki nito. It's too little. Ano yung maidadalilan mo kaya hindi ka magtatapot sa Panginoon? What would be your reason? Is it big enough to the God who saved your life? Uh, okay. Nothing! You are, you, you are accountable. You have to be responsible. You are just enabled and you have to be humble because you are a steward of God. Amen. Amen. Sana ho yun ang isip natin. Kasi pag sobrang laki ng tingin natin sa isang bagay na gagawin natin na ilan para hindi sa mapagwinguran na kakaya tayo. Kasi lahat ng galing natin, lahat ng meron tayo, lahat ng aliyar-liyar natin, lahat ng talento natin, all of those things are God-given. And we will face the judgment seat of Christ one day and we will give an account. Have you been faithful? Hindi niya sinabi, Come thou good and very talented servant. Come thou good high-pitched singer. Come thou good great giver. Ang sabi niya, Come thou good and faithful servant. Amen. God has not so many things to be listed. Ano kaya ang titignan ni Lord? Dalawa lang mo. Good and faithful servant. Yan, dalawa lang ang titignan mo sa sarili mo. Am I good? Am I faithful? Just the two of that. Dalawa na lang yan. 
hindi ka nalalayo. Hindi ka na mag-iisip. Hindi mo na kailangan ng panaginip para malaman mo kung saan natutuwa ang Diyos sa buhay mo. Masaya ba ang Diyos sa buhay ko? Tanungin mo yung dalawang yan. Mabuti ka ba? Matapat ka ba? I am a steward of God. Am I good? Am I faithful? Because I will give an account when He returns. Tumayo po tayo na. Be a steward leader. Maging katiwala ka ng Diyos na tagapanguna.